Hey guys, um, this is going to be the first video that I'm actually providing uh, commentary in, uh, where I've got my face in the video at the same time. So it's going to be a bit of a different experience for me. But anyway, this video is is about qualifying the benefits of doing Bikram Yoga for a strength athlete. And it's an experiment, and that's why I'm giving this introduction, because I think it requires some explanation to make sense. Um, so, basically, like I said, the goal of this video is to try and determine what's the mental and physical benefits for strength athletes of doing Bikram Yoga. Um, this video is mainly just going to focus on the physical side, because I haven't had an opportunity to apply um, the mental conditioning, nor have I been doing it long enough to really get that kind of uh, mental conditioning. So that's going to be you know, a discussion for a later period, although I'll commentate on it briefly. Um, but mainly, uh, the experiment is going to be to measure uh, a couple of key identifiers in performing a bodyweight squat. And those key identifiers are going to be the kyphotic kyf movement in the upper back and anterior pelvic tilt, which are two sort of big problems in some of the squatting that I've been trying to do um, in the past three or four months. So, uh, just an explanation of those two things. Um, kyphosis is, um, a lot of us are prone to it nowadays because we all sit in front of computers. Um, you know, I work in IT, so I'm basically a you know, criminal, criminal in this regard. And kyphosis is the rounding of the upper back. So normally we have sort of a posture that lets us sort of stand like this, but you know, because we're always sitting in front of computers, we're rounded over our trap muscles and taking over for our rotator cuffs, we tend to roll, roll forward like that. Um, which is horrible for the squat because you need to keep your chest uh, up and forward. Now the second thing is uh, tight hamstrings. Um, I say tight, ha tight hamstrings, but the key identifier is actually anterior pelvic tilt. And for me personally, the anterior pelvic tilt occurs because of tight hamstrings. So you're coming down to the bottom of the squat and the hip is at the point where it's furthest away from the knee. And what this means to your hamstrings, your hamstrings are nice and tight and you're gonna have that elastic force um, coming up with contraction. Um, but what happens for me is because my hamstrings are so sort of flexible is that the hamstring would lose out, basically. It wouldn't be able to extend that far and it would just say, I give up and then it would bring the, uh, the butt with it. So the lower back would round out. Which what that means for the rest of your back is you'll round it out. You've got a forward bending spine and at the bottom of a squat where your spine is completely compressed, that's not what you want. So we're trying to measure t the, the reduction of those two things. We're trying to make sure that the kyphosis is going away and that the anterior pelvic tilt is disappearing. Um, now, for me personally, those are just a couple of reasons that, uh, you know, a couple of the secondary reasons that I was doing Bikram Yoga, but the main reason I was doing Bikram Yoga is because I've got a flexor injury and I've had this left hip flexor problem for several months now and it's just plagued my squatting. I get to the bottom of the squat and I feel like my hip was going to blow up. So, I've tried, you know, osteotherapy, homemade stretching routines combined with foam rolling, Pilates for uh, two to three months. And whilst I saw, pardon me, you know why I don't put myself in front of the camera now. Um, the reason that, um, sorry, let me just start again. I'd had osteotherapy a couple of times and it corrected some of my issues, but um, that issue would come back. So I can continue to get corrected again and again and again, but the reason I did Bikram Yoga was because I hoped it could address the underlying issue. So enough with the talking, let's go and watch the footage. So this is the first bit of footage I took, and as you can see there's a lot of rounding out of the upper back and a lot of anterior pelvic tilt. You can see that butt is rolling towards the knee the hamstring gives out and tries to reduce the distance between the knee and the hip. Um, just after a couple of classes, you can see there's a lot more control over the upper back, nowhere near as much rounding out, um, and there's still a little bit of tilt. And this kind of progression continues throughout the next few clips, so I'll just let you visually soak that in while I talk about the, the mental aspect of Bikram Yoga. Um, so by virtue of being done in a 40 degree room, uh, at 60% humidity for 90 minutes, um, Bikram Yoga is a fantastic way to basically teach yourself to not give up. Uh, you know, you, think you put a strongman competition into perspective and at the end of the day, it's five minutes of absolute intensity. 
Whereas Bikram yoga, done you know several times a week, is 90 minutes of you know basically coming coming close to passing out, vomiting, you know, having some sort of I don't know, astral experience or something for some people who are particularly spiritual. But it's a very challenging form of yoga, and if you enjoy challenging forms of training and you're looking for something that's going to give you that edge in terms of flexibility, rehabilitation, preventative uh, you know, methods of preventing injuries, then Bikram Yoga is basically the way to go. It's, there's, there's nothing more, there's nothing emasculating about going, going and doing yoga in a room full of attractive, limber young women and knowing that the classes that you go to are making you stronger. Uh, you know that if you if you're taking three months break from weight training because you've got too many injuries to train or compete, when you come out of Bikram Yoga, you will be stronger than when you started. So there's nothing emasculating about it at all. Just get in there and do it, and you'll find that it's really challenging. So if you like if you like stuff like strongman, you'll appreciate the challenge of Bikram Yoga. So let's just wrap this up with the final comparison. Uh, again, first piece of footage, no classes, heaps of anterior pelvic tilt, a lot of kyphosis. You can really see the chest collapsing as the butt rolls towards the knees. And then something that I shot earlier today. A lot more control. The back is nearly straight, but we're still bringing the stomach towards the thighs, as you would expect in a decent squat. Uh, uh, months of being plagued with the ability to squat without interior pelvic tilt and then being able to do this is fantastic. I mean, I'll literally, I will literally walk out of a class and won't be able to, you know, have forward spine bending. Um, but if, the, if you were interested in doing Bikram Yoga at all, I hope that this is, um, you know, it's certainly... I haven't been able to qualify whether it's going to fix my hip flexor issue. I think that that might require imaging or something like that. But hopefully this video in and of itself has provided you with enough ammunition to make a decision around doing a Bikram yoga, especially if you're a strength athlete, trying to recover from an injury or improve your flexibility and thereby improve your lifting. So that's pretty much it for this video. Uh, thank you for watching. Have a lovely day and a Merry Christmas.